Hello, everybody. Welcome to National Sewing Circle. My name is Emily Steffen. I am from Oye Studio. And today is the first live of the four-part pillow series that I'm doing. We titled it Easy, Cute, and Fun Colorful Summer Pillows. It's a mini series. <laughs> um, I am going to come at you every Thursday at 11 o'clock central time. So Thursday for the next four weeks in June. And I'm going to guide us through projects that bring color and excitement. If you just got a sewing machine, if you are excited about learning to craft or sew, this is for you. And I'm excited to go along with you. If you're watching on the site, you can download the instructions for the pillows right by clicking the banner in the chat box. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, the link will be in your video description. So you can download the four free patterns that I have for you. And um, I first worked with National Sewing Circle on the Oh So Simple Sewing Challenge, and I made a pizza pouch, <laughs> if you made that, and a, oh, and some easy napkins, some napkins, we use fabric napkins in our house. So this is an, um, it's, it's a fun extra mini series that we get to do. So chat, leave me a chat in the comments. If you have any questions, let me know where you're watching from. Let me know what you're excited about in this pillow series. And today I am starting with this really colorful and fun tassel pillow. So I know tassels are like the sister or the cousin to pom-poms, pom-poms. And I did a live video um, for National Sewing Circle about how to make the perfect pom. So you can go see that and take all the tips and tricks. But tassels are like the cousin or the sister to a palm. You can make them in earrings. You can put them on the edge of your pillow. And I wanted something. Um, my kids love making tassels and pom-poms because it's a way to actually get rid of all your yarn scraps. <laughs> so I found a way to make it into this kind of fun, textural, colorful pillow that you can put on your porch or your couch or your kids' room because you Start by saying that um, you can either make all of my patterns with the exception of, of one, you can either buy a store-bought pillowcase, you know, like the, the case for the back from Walmart or Target or anywhere. Ikea has amazing ones. Or you can make your pillow. So my instructions have for both. Because if you're intimidated by sewing and you want to start small and you want to buy a pillow cover, totally cool. So... The instructions are really simple. We're going to go through some of the tips and tricks today, and you'll end up with a super good knowledge on how to make this pillow. So first things first is you'll have to know the size of your pillow form. And I have mine right here. It's a, most of the time on the tag of the pillow, it'll say the size of it. And so mine says it's 14 by 20. When you're making a pillow cover, A, I don't want to fuss with zippers because... I'm a fast crafter and I just don't really want to fuss with zippers. So I make pillow covers that you slide into that end up looking like this. It's like a pocket that you can slide your pillow into it, just overlapping on the back. So you'll cut three pieces. The first piece um, will be the measurement of your pillow plus one inch because I'm going to do kind of bigger half inch seam allowances for this because it's a pillow and my kids have pillow fights all the time. So I need to make sure it's secure. So my 14 by 20 pillow, I'm gonna make my first piece 15 by 21, which is right here. Easy, right? You can lay it on, make sure it's kind of right. I am using just a normal, it's like just a cotton. You can use thicker fabric, you can use thinner fabric, you can use pattern fabric, you can use striped fabric. Whatever you wanna use, I think, will give variety and excitement to your pillow. So one inch larger than your pillow for the front, and then you're gonna make two back sides, so two overlapping back sides. So for me, that ends up being, again, 15 inches this way, and then I want it to overlap. You don't want it to overlap only a couple inches. You want it to overlap like four, maybe five inches if you're being generous. It depends on your pillow. Now, of course, if you only have a pillow that's eight by eight, you don't want it to overlap five inches. So I would say maybe a third of the back is what you want to overlap. Um, there's no real math <laughs> involved in that other than make sure that your overlapping portion is large enough so that it overlaps generously. 
because if it's not, you're just gonna get this weird bulge like this if there's not enough fabric to overlap. So I did mine 15 by seven, 15 by 16 because, 15 by 17, I'm sorry, 15 by 17 because I have a four inch, four and a half inch overlap right here. So three pieces, your front and your two backs. And um, again, if you're new to sewing, hopefully this is really easy and really simple. The first step is after you've cut this out, the first step is to sew these two back panels so that they're ready to go. And all I've done is take my iron and iron overlapping like this. Just iron a seam, just iron a flat seam that you're gonna stitch in place. Pretty simple, just to hem it so that you have a nice hemmed edge. You can see that. I don't know that it matters 100% what your exact seam allowance will be, but I'm just gonna stitch it really quickly so I can show you exactly how to do it to plug my machine in. If anybody has any questions or comments, feel free to stick them in the chat. All right, so first step is to hem this back part. I've ironed it, which will make it really easy to hem, or we're just gonna do a straight stitch. Um, I am not the kind of person that matters how well my fabric and my um, thread match. <laughs> Maybe you are. Maybe you're the kind of person that wants contrasting thread, and I think that's okay. I'm gonna tilt my screen down so you can see just a little bit better. But all I'm doing is doing a really simple straight hem here for this pillow. My son actually hemmed a couple of these when I was making them the, uh, a couple weeks ago. He was helping me hem because he's just getting into sewing. Or maybe he's just so bored at home because we've been at home for so long. Either way, I'll take it. I'm, I'm happy with it. Just a simple little hem, just like this. If you really want to be advanced and you want to put a zipper in your pillow pillow cover, I give you all the thumbs up in the world because I applaud you. I love zippers. I love putting zippers in pouches, but I don't put zippers in pillows, <laughs> which is maybe a big no-no, but that is what works for me. And I feel like sewing, and maybe you feel like this too, is one of those things where there's 900 ways to And this is just the way that I found to do it. <laughs> which I love. This works for us, works for me, and it makes me happy, and that's the point of a hobby and a craft, right? So I'm just top stitching. I'm staying really close to this um, folded edge to make sure to catch, staying really close to this folded edge to make sure to catch it. It's just a straight stitch. Nothing fancy. The real fun in all of these patterns that I have is actually decorating the top. <laughs> That's why I think it's a pretty easy project. So both are hemmed for the back, and I'm just gonna set those aside. And I'm actually going to move my sewing machine because it's just gonna be in the way while we're doing the tassels. Whoa. It's a beast. So depending on the size of the pillow you have, um, this has been thrown around in a pillow fight a few times, if you can tell. <laughs> but depending on the size of the pillow that you have, um, you will probably know how many tassels you need to make. I chose to have, how many colors? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight colors. And I did three tassels of each to kind of make this diamond pattern. You could do a heart. You could do your initial. Um, the only thing to consider when you're doing tassels is to know that they hang down. So uh, obviously they hang down. But when you tack them on, they're going to have hanging space. So when you're when you're making a shape or when you're making a letter or whatever you're deciding, just kind of lay them out as you go so you can place them on the pillow accordingly. So this is the finished one I'm gonna set aside. But as you're going, if you wanna keep your um, fabric out on top of what you're doing so you can kind of lay it out, I think that's wise. Here are my tassel tips for you. So all you'll need to make perfect tassels is a piece of cardboard. You can use your Amazon box, a, a, a cereal box, anything. Some scissors, the yarn that you wanna use for your tassels, and embroidery floss. And then we are gonna use just like a tapestry needle or a, you know, a thicker eyed needle. Um, not a darning needle because that isn't sharp enough to go through the fabric, 
I just sit down to see you. So I chose to make my tassels three inches um, high or, or dangly. So I'm gonna cut your, cut your uh, cardboard. It doesn't much matter the width of it, it matters more the height of it. So the width doesn't matter, but it's gonna be the height. So if I use this as my tassel, my tassel as my tassel pattern or whatever, this is, my tassel is gonna be this long. I don't want to do that long. Maybe you do want to have really shaggy tassels, but I'm gonna cut it, you know, about three inches S. I told you we weren't gonna do a lot of math, so hopefully this, is, this isn't gonna be precise. So about three inches is what you're gonna need. If you do have a tassel maker, I know Clover makes tassel makers, I make tassel makers, um, use those 100%, but this is an easy way to not have to have that. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, Cheryl, I didn't tell you. I'm using a Janome sewing machine. I have the 9450, and it is a dream sewing machine, and I love it. I stand behind that machine. Simply, my favorite feature of that sewing machine is the thread cutter, <laughs> the automatic thread cutter, so I don't have to pull out and clip all those threads. That's one of my favorite things ever. If you have any other questions, feel free to pop them in the, in the chat. Okay, so step one of a tassel. You are going to wrap your yarn over top of each other in this middle portion of the um, cardboard. So you can count if you want your tassels to be the same um, exact size. I don't, I'm not that kind of crafter. I'm not that precise. Um, but I think I just kind of eyeball it. So I'm wrapping my yarn. I'm going to just guess about 50 times. Maybe if you're using thicker yarn, it's going to be 20 times. Or 15 times maybe if you're using super thin embroidery floss a lot of people love to make tassels straight out of embroidery floss and that is um, awesome because I think the thinner the yarn for tassels this is Omega Krill yarn I don't know if you can see it's sort of like three little strands of embroidery floss um, it is something that it's colorful and lightweight and gorgeous, I think. So about, you'll, you'll get the depth, right? Like you'll start seeing kind of the thickness of what your, of, of the tassel. You don't want it to be this crazy huge chunky tassel that's hanging off your pillow. Maybe for adding tassels to the side of a curtain or the edge of your pillow, you want it to be chunkier. But I don't think that's necessary for this project. So you can kind of see what the depth or the thickness is going to be and then kind of eyeball it from there. So I'll cut, Ta -da. just cut it, and you're left with this, right? You're left with this chunk of yarn on your cardboard. Um, I like to wiggle it to the edge. Your cardboard's gonna get mangled a little bit, and that's okay. If you have a tassel maker, it's gonna be less mangled. The key, I should have said this maybe beforehand, what I didn't do is wrap crazy super tight around the cardboard because that's what's gonna make it trickier for you in the long run. So um, I'm just sliding this because the, the tighter you wrap on this cardboard, the harder it's going to be to slide off. And you want to try and keep your chunk of yarn as intact or as in, in a glob as you possibly can for this. So I'm going to slide it to the edge. I'm going to take a piece of my sort of similar color just because I want to keep it sort of similar embroidery floss and cut a good amount. This is a foot-ish, I would say, 12 inches. You can cut more, you can cut less, but don't cut too little because you'll see why pretty quickly. You're going to thread your floss in like through the, it through the top loop. You're gonna get it through that top loop up there. So essentially you're creating the hanger part, right? Or what would look like the hanger part. And then you're gonna slide it off so gently. If you have a tassel maker, your, your steps are gonna be a tiny bit different because they have holes in them. So if you're making a typical tassel that you wanna hang, what you do is tie this right here. We don't necessarily need to hang them as much as we need to make the knob. I'm gonna show a lighter one because it's a little bit easier the knob right here at the top. Do you see that? It's hard to see because these are on here. Here, let's find this guy. There's like a knob at the top right there, the knob and then the hanging down part. So you can, if you want to, tie it right here. 
at the top. I don't want to do that though. I would rather move it in this part. If you hold your tassel, just a little bit delicate. It seems trickier than it really is. If you hold your tassel, you're going to see that these are going to be your tassel -y parts and this is going to be your knot at the top. So you can start to wrap your embroidery floss around to make that top knob. And the, t the more you wrap and the tighter you wrap, the better your tassel is going to be. And the only tricky part about this is to make sure that it stays, do you see how it's kind of becoming tasselly with this knob at the top? To stay in a chunk. Because once your, your threads or your um, yarn go rogue, it just becomes messy looking. <laughs> so I'm going to tie this off. Right here. And give it another good tie. The cool thing about tassels and pom-poms -pom is that they don't have to be perfect. Because this one, I can already tell, is a little bit, see how like my threads are just a little bit wonky? That's okay. But I have a little tassel right here that's not clipped. So without clipping your embroidery floss, without clipping your embroidery floss at the top, you are going to clip your ends. Put your, your, your scissors right in the middle and give it a good trim. Now, obviously, look how janky that bottom part is. My edges are everywhere. You can hold it in your hand and now give it, just like any good pom-pom, a good haircut. So give it some trimming to make it as long or as short, or maybe you made it too long or too weird. And there you have a tassel. I'm gonna demonstrate one more time a little bit quicker, but it's really straightforward and really easy. It is, if you've made, if you're a pom-pom maker, these tassels are like, like I said, the second cousin to pom-poms. Um, so just a quick little demo one more time. You have your cardboard. Wrap, 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 wrap. I counted about 50 times, um, but again, I'm eyeballing as I go. So wrap, wrap, wrap. And this is a good project to help have your kids help you with. Um, if it's a rainy day inside and you want to make this pillow, you can do the sewing and your kids can do the tassel making. This is a good project for Netflix binging at night. <laughs> so that's always fun. So after you wrap, you cut. After I trim that, I'm getting a big piece of embroidery. else or other yarn for this. I like embroidery floss because it's easy to thread and attach to the pillow. Stick it through here. Just like that. So it's through the hole. Slide it off gently. It's hard to show sliding gently. <laughs> I'm just kind of sliding as a chunk to get it off. Some people, some, you might think it's easier to lay it on the, I'm going to put it on here so you can see better, to lay it on um, the surface to do this part, which is totally fine too, rather than holding it. I like to hold it, but um, you can lay it down as well. So hold your embroidery floss and then wrap your knob at the top. I am all about, Beth just said she loves that my son helps. <laughs> And I am all about getting my kids to explore creativity because I so 105,000% of my being believe that kids are incredible at being creative and they are colorful and they're so talented. And I believe that creativity is a muscle. So the more you use it, the better you are at it. And there's nothing better than giving kids every muscle that they can to be successful. My little tiny rant for the day, I guess. Just ex allow your kids to experience these things. And maybe my son will hate making things when he's older, and that is okay, and I will support it. But at least I'm helping him to give the opportunity to him so that he can learn to express himself in his feelings and in his thoughts. So I just wrapped around the, um, the embroidery floss to make this knob at the top, right there. And then now I'm gonna give it a trim. This is also maybe a really good project for your girlfriends and you if you're sitting on the back deck or something for a little happy hour or something.
Um, or maybe just me. <laughs> I often get asked too, I'm giving this a trim. I often get asked, what do you do with the little trimmings? And I, we recently just had to, of course, we're all at home and we recently just had to send some gifts to my kids' teachers. And we put um, this, what my kids were calling yarn confetti scraps in the little note, which either I'm sure his teacher either loved or hated when <laughs> she opened up the card because it was like a little explosion of yarn scraps, which I mean, after we did it, I was like, oh, maybe that wasn't the best idea because I just made her have to sweep her floor. But it was it was exciting. It was fun. It was way down color. So once you have all of your pom pom or all of your tassels, if you will, and um, again, we did our back panels. Decorating the front is going to be the, the more laborious part of it, I would say. So as you're making them, you can lay them out in, and maybe you're going to do stripes of different colors right down the front. Maybe you're going to do the exact diamond shape that this one is. Um, maybe you're going to do a circle. Maybe you're only going to do all one color and you're going to spell out. I don't know. Either way, there's two options on how to attach it. If you have a needle, great. If you're like fooey with the needles, get your glue gun out. I'm totally not going to judge you if you do not want to use a needle to <laughs> get them in place. So what I did is once you've laid them out, it's very easy to attach it. You didn't trim the embroidery floss part because that's what we're going to actually use to attach to the, the pillow cover itself, the pillow casing or whatever. Um, a tip for when you're using tassels is obviously you want to lay it over top of each other to get kind of that tassel look. Um, which means you will likely want to attach the bottom tassel before you attach the top tassel. So with this project, I worked my way from blue all the way up to the, the purple color. Um, man, these tassels really have been in a pillow fight and they're staying on nice and tight, which is making me proud. Um, so start with the bottom, work all the way up to the top, and um, add as you go. I'm a, hu I'm a visual person, so I like to lay everything out first and then go from there. So all you're going to do is, this is where my tassel wants to go. I'm going to thread each part of my needle right here. Thread the needle. And then as best as you can, knowing you want it to attach it right here, just stick the thread and pull it to the back side. Take it off the needle and then do the same to the other side. So essentially you're bringing these two embroidery flosses from the front to the back. And it's pretty easy. My son was trying to help with this and then he got distracted and bored, so I <laughs> finished. But he would have probably been all in if I would have let him use the glue gun because he's seven and you know, but we're not we're not quite there yet. Um, so essentially, you know, there's there's where the tassels on the front. I did a few of these at a time, so I had attached, whoops. I had attached um, a few of the blue ones, had, had put the embroidery floss at the top to the back on a few of the blue ones. And then what I did is flipped it over and just tied a nice knot. And again, if you don't wanna do this part, I totally get it. Just get out your hot glue gun and glue the tassels on. That's totally fine too. I knew that our pillow would be used for, you know, multiple various, probably, physical things, <laughs> whether it be um, forts or pillow fights. So I knew that I had to kind of make it appear really nice. So this is what it's going to look like on the back. It's just going to be a knot on the back and then a tassel on the front. And the one thing I'm just going to caution you by as you are attaching your tassels is you don't, knowing that this is the front that is unfinished for your pillowcase, you want to make sure you're giving yourself at least, I'm just gonna say an inch or maybe even two inches, <clears throat> excuse me, around the edge because not only do you not want your tassels in your seam allowance at all, but you wanna make sure that your tassels aren't like wonky off to the side. So I, I have a good two and a half, probably three inches from the edge, which is a, probably about this much from where the edge of it is because your pillow is, is 3D and, um, whatever the opposite of the word concave is, <laughs> I'm not remembering that math word, but it's obviously 3D and you don't want to have your pillow, your, your tassels kind of have this like weird fanning out. You kind of want them to lay forward and lay down. As a matter of fact, this one right here does feel a little rogue and I probably could have moved him in just a little bit to fill in that space. 
But um, that's just the only, I guess, warning I would give you of tassels is give yourself plenty of space on the edge of your pillow so that when you sew it, it lays correctly and you're not trying to wrestle with these getting stuck in your seam allowance. So I'm not going to make 30 some tassels right now <laughs> to actually finish this pillow. So what I am going to do though is show you once again how to attach these just in case anybody needs um, a quick refresher. Just thread one side, lay it where you want it to be, overlap a little bit, and then with each of the embroidery flosses, you're going to pull it just to the back. Whoop. This is where it's, you'll notice it's not crazy important to have the exact same color embroidery floss as your tassel. I mean, it maybe is important to make sure it's not totally contrasted, but um, somebody is asking, do you have any recommendations on choosing colors for your pillow? Well, let me just tell you about my theory about color. I love color. I think color is one of the happiest things you can bring into your life. Um, there's been so many studies done on adding color on your walls, in your home, on what you wear, and to lean into that. So I would say, this is always my advice for somebody choosing colors, always my advice. Gravitate towards the things you love, 100%. If you love yellow, go with yellow. If you love red, go with red. Choose the things that make you happy, because that's the point of color, that's the point of adding color into your pillows, into your house, into what you wear, is to do what makes you happy. So um, when I was choosing these colors for these tassels, I knew I wanted to make it kind of a rainbow, fun, kind of ombre, if you will. So I have a, a darker blue, this kind of aqua color, and then it's a couple different yellows, and then this pink and purple, and this is like a mustard color. Um, I clustered them by color, and then I just sort of thought, hmm, what looks best? At first, when I thought of this project, actually, I was going to like make color everywhere and have like little tassels hanging kind of all over the pillow. There is actually an anthropology pillow that made me think of making it like that, and it's um, rows of different tassels. But as I was laying them out, I just kind of went with what I loved. I went with where I thought they fit, how much I loved it, and then tacked it on. If you, if you, you could, uh, yes, um, Jetta's asking if I can move the tassel after I've made the pillow, like my weird yellow one. I 100% could. I could take out this pillowcase, and I can clip the thread and then re, re, I could either make a new tassel, that's option one, make a new tassel, or rewind your end around this part and then move this wonky one in. I'm not even realizing, this is making me realize how wonky this yellow one is. I probably should fix it. This is, yeah, I didn't even notice it, I guess, until now. Or maybe all the tassels have just settled and it looks a little different. But absolutely, if you've tacked it out. Now, if you're doing the um, glue gun method, I mean, you could try and rip it off and maybe put it right back on. I'm, I'm unsure about how how that would go. But since since I have tacked down my, my top of my tassel, my knob with knots ahead of time, it's not going to hurt it to clip the part that's just tying it onto the pillow itself. You can re-wrap re that knob because it will stay in its place. You're not clipping the integrity of that knot, if that makes sense. So these are attached, and what you can do too if you're feeling like, oh, I'm not sure, ah, um, is you can thread all of your tassels to the back, and, and without tying these knots, you can, you know, lay it on your pillow, you know, ruffle it up, see what kind of happens, and then move things accordingly without, without committing and tying these quite yet before you finish your pillow. Um, Carrie's asking, do your tassels ever shed? That is 100% all about the yarn that you choose to use. So this is 100% acrylic. It's this, it's basically embroidery floss, but it's three strands of embroidery floss together called a mega krill. If you use 100% wool um, yarn, it's gonna shed. That's totally fine. Maybe you just need to brush it with a comb <laughs> or something. Um, I know that pom-poms, if, if you use wool, they're gonna shed a little bit. I don't feel like it's going to shed like a sweater will shed or, you know, like pill up or, or shed like a sweater will shed, but I also haven't made tassels in every single yarn under the sun. So that I'm like a hundred percent not clear on. Um, 
what you could do is test it out and make a tassel and kind of like fluff it up a little bit and then see if it sheds and see if you'll hate it. Um, the other thing maybe to consider is your backing fabric and make sure that it's not, you can use any fabric for your backing fabric. Um, make sure it's not like a wool that would hold those shed, shedded pieces or those pilled pieces that might be important. Um, so, okay, so back to the project. Once you have your tassels done and they're all laid out and they're here, they're tied or they're, or they're, um, or they're glued on, your last step is to construct your pillow. So again, try and keep everything away from the very edges here. But what you're going to do, this is like so easy. And again, the reason I don't use it for my pillow is because I just don't want to. You're going to start with one of your overlapping um, pieces that we have already hemmed. And you're going to do right sides together, which means the front of your pillow is going to match the already hemmed side. So not the raw side, the hemmed side. And you're essentially going to lay this on and stitch around it. So stitch, 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 and then the same with the other side. I'm going to show you one side quickly. Get my, get my sewing machine back up here. <clears throat> this thing is a heavy man, and I am not mad at it because it is a workhorse that I love. It's on. So right sides together, and I'm going to sew one at a time to create the overlap. And all I'm going to do, I don't pin either. So if you're a pinner, please pin. I don't, I don't love to pin. I just don't. And I feel like that maybe get me hate mail, but it is okay because we are all creatives. <laughs> and we are all doing something that makes us happy. So I don't pin a lot just because... I don't, and that's okay. But I'm also not a precise quilter, so that is maybe the caveat to that. Um, but I'm going to just stitch, and again, I added one inch around the edges of um, the, 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 the fabric that I cut. So I'm giving myself a good half inch seam allowance because I know that these pillows are gonna be used in pillow fights and for forts, and I 100% wanna make sure that they, that they don't um, get torn open because I don't want to go back and fix it later because I'm usually, I just don't want to. <laughs> so I'm giving myself a really good seam allowance. And on each part of um, this part right here, when you're sewing over this part where it's going to be pulled because you're setting your, your pillow inside, I'm in a back stitch or lock stitch, depending on what you want to do. I'm going to back stitch a couple times just to make sure it's really in place. I love that people are saying that they've seen these expensive pillows before on anthropology or um, all these crazy places. And now you can make it, you can make the one on anthropology that is like, I think it's like $95 for the pillow. Um, is it's a like, Oh boy. See, I have like yarn confetti everywhere. It is a beige pillow back, like a beige pillowcase. And it has different colors of like tone on tone. It's really beautiful. And it looks so expensive um but it's like it's gold and there's white and there's darker browns and darker beiges and it's beautiful and it's like 95 dollars so you can make your own also carol is saying <laughs> pin 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 her grandma always taught her to pin 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 i know i'm telling you i'm so sorry if i'm offending you that i'm not pinning but i celebrate all the ways we can make <laughs> And I will tell you, you'll probably find flaws in my sewing because I don't pin. But for me, making is 100% all about the process and the fun and the joy and the color that happens. So um, if you pin, I love you all the more because you're doing it the way that you love to. <laughs> so I'm making sure my tassel is not going into the seam allowance as well. Pretty easy. Ta-da! So here is the first one. All you are is adding that overlap. So when you flip it right side out, it's going to be the right side. Can you make tassels with the yarn you have for a faux fur pillow look? That sounds amazing. I bet you can. I don't know. 
I wonder what yarn you would use to do that, to make like a faux fur pillow. I mean, that could be really cool. You'd have to have a lot of little tassels, um, but that'd be really fun. I think you should make it and send me a picture of it because I would love, love, love to see that. This is the fun of making and being a community is you put out one idea and then everybody has other ideas and makes it their own way. And that's the part that I super duper love the most. So then I'm just going to repeat the step um, that I did before by laying right sides together. And so you'll see the actual overlap that's going to happen right here with where we're going to put the pillow in here. And then this is going to overlap right here. Ta-da! All right. And I'm going to, I never showed you tips on corners. And um, so if you're a new sewist, this might help you. I'm going to lay this all straight here. And again, backstitch over this edging a little bit. And all I do when I come to a corner, because I want to make sure the corners of my pillows are corners rather than corners. <laughs> I want to make them as, as kind of uh, tight as I can. Um, I go right up to as close to the edge with, um, excuse me, let me back up. I go up to where my seam allowance would be. And seam allowance is just the space that you're giving for like the seam. So if I lay my fingers of where I kind of imagine my seam to be, right there, this is kind of not maybe the best, but right here, I'll do this side. If I lay my fingers of where I imagine my seam to be, right like this and like this, I will bring my um, needle to the point like right about there. Whoops, right about there. And then leave my pin, my needle in, lift my foot up so my needle stays in and you pivot your fabric. It's pretty easy. I'll show you right now quickly here. So I get to the edge of where about I think it's gonna be. Stop sewing. I lift my my foot, which I have the automatic button, which I was doing before, but lift your foot, keep your needle in, and pivot. And each machine is kind of just like super slightly different on how it treats your needle going down. Whoa, I don't know what that sound was. Um, because some people you have to actually turn your, your wheel over here on the side to keep your needle down. My needle stays down when I'm done sewing because that's just how I have my machine set. Each machine is just a touch different. Um, so just whatever it is, just make sure your needle is down when you lift your foot. Ta-da, pivot. Here we go. I am getting, see I'm telling you, this is like little confettis everywhere. This yarn confetti is all over the place. And I mean, it is, yeah, everywhere. <laughs> Although it is kind of the story of our household that constantly have little pieces of, of fabric or yarn or confetti everywhere. Okay, we are almost done. Okay, so the last thing you have to do, cut my thread, which Janome, my favorite thing about this Janome, like I said, is the thread cutter, where I just hit the button and it cuts the thread so I don't have to pull it out and do the whole deal. Great. Okay, so I'm going to turn this off and put my machine down. The one thing to know about corners, and maybe this is a refresher, maybe this is new for you, is if I were just to turn my fabric or my pillowcase right side out, it'll, it's, it gets really bunchy in corners. So I want to clip this extra bulk from the corners and I'm not clipping my threads because my threads are right there and I'm not clipping so close that it's like endangering it. But I'm just clipping the corners and clipping the bulk so that when I turn it out, oops, it's a bigger corner. When I turn it out, right side out, it's not going to have that bulk and it's as pointy and less rounded as it can be. So now is the moment of truth. And this is the fun part of any pillow making is you flip it right side out. Stick your fingers or a turning tool or wiggle your way to get your corner nice and cornery. Corners nice and cornery. See, nice and ta -da. And then you put your pillow in. That's the fun part. The reveal is always the best part of any sewing project, right? 
Okay. Do, 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 do. Ta da! I mean, it looks kind of lame because we only did two tassels, but I guess you get the idea. <laughs> so we'll slip our pillow in right here, and then away you go, and you have your pillow all done. And it's kind of an anthropology inspired or tassel inspired, colorful, fun pillow. So I'd love to see photos, so share photos if you have them. And I will be here next week sharing the next installment of the pillow series. And next week we are making a rainbow pillow with pom-poms at the bottom. And I told my son he maybe could come on and make pom-poms with me. So the download for these patterns is in the banner below. And there's also a landing page. So be sure to grab all four of those patterns are on the same PDF. So be sure to grab that. You can work ahead. You can come ready with your questions if you've already made it. But I'll be here next Thursday at 11 Central Time for the next installment. Thanks so much. Have a good week, everybody.